Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Fun Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how I created this really fun like Halloween tie-dye design. Uh, I got this tie-dye pattern from Sweet Baby Blue Designs. It is part of the monthly images that my Patreon members get from her every month. That's a new added benefit that we added to the group. If you wanna learn more about my Patreon group, I will definitely link it down below. Or if you just wanna purchase this tie-dye design, I will also link uh, Sweet Baby Blue's design shop where you can just purchase that file if you would like to use the same one. So I'm gonna have all the other products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box as well. And you will definitely find some discount codes for you there. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so as usual, we're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've spray painted white using a flat white spray paint from Rust-Oleum. And I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed here. I'm using Alumalite's amazing quick coat. This is their fast drying epoxy. And I've mixed in just enough glitter to cover the top surface of my epoxy. We are going to do this like quick glitter technique that I use a lot just because I want a subtle glitter base for the design that I'm going to be creating on top of it. So we're just gonna mix that glitter into our epoxy really well. We wanna have even saturation throughout our epoxy, okay? So we wanna have the glitter evenly distributed through that whole little medicine cup of epoxy. And if you feel like you need to add a little bit more, that's okay. Um, but you don't wanna add too much to where you change the consistency of your epoxy, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna get this fully mixed in and then I'm going to apply the epoxy all over the surface of my cup like I normally would, making sure we've got everything nice and smooth and evenly coated. I'm gonna hit it with my torch real quick just to pop any like micro bubbles and things. And then I'm gonna let this turn for about two to three hours before we move on to the next step. Keep in mind that the dry time on your epoxy may vary based on the type of epoxy you're using and the brand. Remember, I'm using a fast setting epoxy, so that's why my dry time is so quick. After my cup's been drying for about four hours, I'm ready to apply my water slide image. We're going to be doing a full wrap water slide on this today with that beautiful Halloween themed tie dye from Sweet Baby Blue Designs. And if you need help printing full sheet water slide edge to edge like this, I will link a video down below that will show you exactly how. It's super simple and easy. I'm gonna start my water slide wrap by pulling off just a small section of that edge there. We just wanna anchor about one inch of that water slide to our cup. And I'm using a silicone makeup brush to help smooth down that first section. We wanna make sure that this is as straight as possible. So straight up and down on our cup. And we wanna kind of visualize where that top rim edge will line up to make sure that we have everything going in the right direction, okay? I am using a skinny straight tumbler. That means there's no taper to this cup. It's the same width around the top as it is the bottom, which makes wrapping it really easy. Already sealed my water slide five times with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint, okay? I let each layer of spray paint dry between the next and I use used a um, like a blow dryer to help speed up that dry process okay so definitely want to do five coats of clear coat when you're doing a full wrap like this okay and I think the key to getting a successful full wrap with your water slide is having really good even clear coat coverage when you're sealing this. So you don't wanna like pull up the spray paint at all. You don't wanna get it too clumpy. You don't wanna just, you know, smother it in layers without letting the next one dry. So nice, light, even coats five different times is how 
you're going to want to start out before you attempt this wrap. Some people like to use like Plasti Dip um, for their full wrap water slides. I'm really not a fan of that. I just use the same sealer that I've been using for years. I just make sure that I do nice even coats and you want to do four to five of them on this full wrap. All right, so you can see I'm also trying to leave my water slide uh, in the water for as long as possible. I am not moving that paper backing off of my water slide a second before I need to. Okay, you'll notice I'm just very slowly inching along using my silicone brush to squeegee out any bubbles or wrinkles in the direction of the remainder of my water slide where there's that opening there. Okay, and again, keeping that paper backing on for as long as possible. Water slide wants to be moist while it's drying because it is going to shrink as it's drying. So if we dry it out too quickly, that's when we start to get cracks because as it starts to contract and shrink, it'll crack if there's not enough moisture on the surface and below it to help it do that. So we don't wanna dry everything out really quickly. We wanna just take our time, make sure everything's nice and moistened as we go along and that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> I will say this is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, truth be told, this was my third take on this technique. Okay, so I had to do this three different times before I hit the jackpot here on the last shot. So um, don't get discouraged if you have a hard time. I am a little rusty with full water slide wraps because I usually use vinyl. Um, and you know, if you wanted to use vinyl, you certainly could do that too. I just really wanted to have that glitter showing below and I also wanted to use this digital image. So that's why I'm using water slide today. Once we get everything wrapped around the cup, you're just gonna trim off that excess along your seam there. And I do want a little bit of an overlap on my seam. This is kind of a forgiving print in that the seam isn't a big deal if we're seeing that overlapping color because this is more of like an abstract kind of tie-dye design. What you're seeing from me now is I'm just kind of going around with my silicone brush with it wet and uh, squeegeeing out any kind of remaining bubbles. Keep in mind that it is contracting and shrinking as it's drying, so you may have no bubbles at first application, and then a few minutes later, more bubbles will show up, and that's again because of that shrinkage. So not everything's staying put on the surface, so you'll wanna just kind of keep going around for like that first five minutes or so, just to double check that no new bubbles have popped up. Um, I trimmed off the excess along that seam with some scissors, but I still kept about a half inch of overlap. And because the edge of this pattern is so dark, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You can't really tell. Um, I just want to make sure that everything's smoothed out and I don't have any wrinkles along that seam. I'm gonna let this dry for about 30 minutes or so before I move on to the next step. You'll also notice that I left all the water on the surface. That's going to help it while it's shrinking as it dries. Okay, after that dried, I applied a thin coat of epoxy right over the top of this. Um, it was about 20 milliliters of epoxy, I think it was. Um, and I did not film that part, I forgot. <laughs> Um, I let that coat of epoxy dry for at least eight hours before we moved on to this step. I want to finish off the bottom of my cup um, with black spray paint to help blend that bottom of the water side. So I've got some painter's tape here and I am just taking the sticky off of it, which means I'm going to run it against my desk. I'm going to run it against my clothes. I do not want this masking tape too sticky before I apply it to my tumbler because all I've got is a thin layer of epoxy between this tape and this water slide. And if my tape is too sticky, I could easily pull it right up and we don't want that to happen. So very important step, take the sticky off your tape. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna mask off the remainder of my cup with some saran wrap. And then I'm just gonna spray paint the bottom of my tumbler with some flat black spray paint. As soon as that dries, we're ready to start the fun stuff with some power wash. 
All right. Um, I have only done power wash method one other time, <laughs> which was when we did that challenge video with Duncan and everybody. It was so much fun. Um, I absolutely love this technique, even though I rarely use it. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the power wash method to mask off areas that we don't want paint. And we're going to spray paint some white spray paint where we do want paint and that's where we're gonna apply some other water slide image later, okay? So I'm going to strategically spray my power wash in the areas that I don't want paint, okay? Keeping in mind the size of my water slide image that I'm going to apply later and also the placement, okay? I'm also going to leave open some kind of like accent areas where I want paint outside of just where I'll be placing my decal, just for some added like detail, okay? I've got some flat white spray, spray paint from Rust-Oleum and I just spray painted over those sections and really quickly rinsed off all that power wash with my hose, all right? And don't worry if things look a little weird or you hit some spots that you don't want, we can clean that up here later. So once I got that all rinsed off, I took it inside and I got a paper towel with some acetone. I also have some rubbing alcohol as well. And I just used some acetone to remove paint that was a little more stubborn in the sections that I definitely didn't want paint to be there. And then I took some rubbing alcohol and I cleaned up areas where it might've looked foggy or like an incomplete spray or just not that good. The rubbing alcohol isn't strong enough to remove your large sections of paint, but it is strong enough to clean up the sections in between that might have gotten foggy, if that makes sense, okay? So this is a step that I think is really important to make things look nice um, and just kind of clean it up and make those power washed uh, paint sections really pop. After I cleaned it up, I noticed that I did want to add some more painted sections as like details. So I just took it back outside after I dried up my cup and cleaned everything up and um, power washed and sprayed again. I did wanna cover up that seam that I had from my water slide pretty well, so that's kind of what I'm doing here, as well as adding a few little accent sections of paint. I rinsed it off again, same process that we did before, um, and then I will take it back inside to do that cleanup process once again with the acetone and the rubbing alcohol. I got the desired look from my paint. I wanted to add some little details to kind of clean it up and really make this pop and make it something special. So I've got a medicine cup here and I'm just gonna fill it up with some spray paint. And I'm using one of these little ball dot uh, tool things. I don't know what they're called. Um, I'm going to use that to paint on some white spray paint around my power washed painted sections to add a little bit of detail. Um, so I have like, you know, a vision in my mind of like those bleached shirts. Um, so I'm just adding some kind of more like organic splatters of paint and dots of paint, I guess. Um, and also sort of cleaning up some sections that might not have gotten like enough paint from the power washed paint. Uh, so just small dots of paint here and there that I think really make a big difference and just make this look really special. After that paint dried, I was ready to apply my water slide image. I already printed this on the same water slide paper that we used for our wrap. I used Kodiak brand water slide and I sealed it four times with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint. And then I also sprayed my tumbler with clear gloss spray paint as well. The paint that I used was a flat paint. So if I apply this water slide right over that flat paint, it's not gonna look good. You're gonna see the edges of my water slide and things like that. And you always wanna mount clear water slide to glossy surfaces, okay? So I just spray painted my cup with some clear gloss spray paint. Same stuff we used to seal our water slide. 
I've got my water slide marinating in some room temp water. Uh, and it only takes a couple minutes for it to lift off its paper backing. Um, once it's, you know, fully moving around on its paper backing, we know we're ready to transfer it onto our cup. And I'm just gonna anchor down a small section on one side and then pull out my paper backing from the other side and then smooth down my water slide image with a silicone makeup brush. Pretty much the same process that we used for our wrap, just on a smaller scale and a lot easier because <laughs> we've just got this small image here, okay? I'm gonna let that dry for about a half hour or so and then we're ready for a coat of epoxy. This is a 20 milliliter coat of epoxy. I'm gonna apply it like I normally would. And I'm gonna let this dry for about eight to 12 hours before we move on to our next step. All right, and now we're ready to start on our sanding. I'm gonna use the same sanding routine that I always do. I've got an 80 grit sanding block here and I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna sand around that top rim there to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This exposed fine line of stainless steel is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal for our cup. That way we're establishing our seal on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. Once I'm done sanding, I'm gonna rinse this off with some dish soap and water, dry it off with some paper towels, and now we're ready for our next step, which is just my decal. So I've got this cute little Halloween queen decal that I put together. I've already got it cut and I'm just layering it now. Um, I cut this with my Cricut and I designed this in Cricut Design Space. I will have the font uh, listed down below as well as the vinyl that I used. Always measure twice so you only have to cut once and I'm going to apply my decal with the hinge method which is what I normally do. And then once I've got my decal applied, I did seal this with a urethane sealer. This is a water-based urethane sealer from counterculturediy.com. Um, if you're looking for it, just go to counterculturediy.com and search for Quick Coat on their website. This is not an epoxy. This is just a water-based urethane sealer that's going to help seal our vinyl to ensure we don't have any lifting or things like that. I also like to do this before my final coat because it really does help to establish a drama-free final coat and seal in any contaminants and things that might prevent us from getting a smooth coat, okay? So I let that dry for about 30 to 45 minutes and then we were ready for our final coat of epoxy. My final coat of epoxy is about 20 milliliters of epoxy and I let this dry for about four to six hours and then I went right back over it with another final coat. Doing the two final coats back to back like that really helps to just get a quick and easy drama free finish and it almost always works out for me, all right? All right, so I just pulled my cup off the turner and it's totally done. Here is what we've got inside. So we're gonna wanna finish this off. We've got, you know, like some excess water slide and things. So you're just gonna take your craft knife and run that along the top rim here, making sure not to scratch anything on the inside or the outside here, okay? And then take a paper towel and I've got some acetone here. This is just regular acetone from the hardware store, not the nail salon. Okay, and then we're gonna run that along the inside here to lift any excess paint that we might have gotten in there or any excess water slide that's like stuck on stubborn. If you have any little pieces of epoxy, you can usually pull it off with your finger there. Just 
scrape off that excess water slide. All right, and it's really important when we're done with our cups that the inside and the top rim looks just as it did um, when we took our cup out of the box. So this should be totally clean inside. This top rim should be totally clean and free of any sort of like epoxy or paint. Really take your time to make sure that you have that all cleaned up. So now we're going to clean out the inside of our cup. So I just take a little bit of power wash. Then I take my scrub daddy or mommy and clean out the inside. Okay, once we got that all rinsed out, just gonna dry everything off with some paper towels. Okay, and then we would replace the lid and package it um, for our customer. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you liked my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.